Hello, good game. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're all having a magical day. Thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. While you're here, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and even become a Patreon if you find some sick value. We'll be playing Boros Burn today. This is a red and white spell-based deck dealing direct damage to our opponent. Literally just picking up our hand and throwing it at their face. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> We're going to break down the deck list, uh, talk about the strategies, the synergies, and then showcase all of that within the gameplay footage, wrap up with our final thoughts deck review, and maybe future upgrades for the deck as well. So stay tuned, watch to the end, enjoy, and let's go. Boros Burn is a best of one standard deck with a 2.1 average mana value. We have 24 non-creatures and 12 creatures. 24 land could be dropped a little bit in my opinion, but it is really nice to curve out uh, to four land, one, two, three, four consistently every game. And that is best done with the 24 land. We also have the MDFC of Spikefield Hazard bringing us to 28, so the consistency is massive. However, typically we are just playing that as an instant speed spell. As far as core pillars of the deck, we have Thermal Alchemist for two mana, a 0-3 with Defender. We can tap it to deal one damage to each opponent, which is, you know, just really, really cool other places. And whenever you cast uh, an instant or sorcery, you get to untap the alchemist, right? So you're tapping it, casting, untapping it, uh, then tapping it, then casting, then uh, untapping it, and just so on and so forth, right? Which is really cool. And then we also have Rem uh, Cholerus Stalwart Slayer, a 2-3 with flying and haste. And if a spell would deal damage to you or another permanent you control, prevent that damage woof right that's absolutely incredible and then if a spell would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent and opponent controls it deals that much damage plus one instead which is really cool right so this just kind of ups the effectiveness of our burn spells which is really cool uh in which we do have a lot of but before we get there let's talk about uh some of the other core concepts of the deck and the moonvale regent for four is you know absolutely ideal in a burn deck a 4-4 four, four with flying, and whenever you cast a spell, you may discard your hand. If you do, draw a card for each of that spell's colors. Let's say we have an empty hand. We cast a shock. We draw a shock. We cast a shock. We draw. Play with fire. And we can just kind of string these spells together, which is really, really cool. And maybe future motivation to trim the lands as far as we can, right? Uh, this is, of course, version 1 of the deck. It doesn't stop there though. When Moonvale Regent dies, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of color among permanents that you control, right? So we have the one color through the Alchemist. We have the two colors through the Slayer. And then of course, two colors through the Radiant Scroll Wielder as well, which has huge synergies within the deck. Instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink. That's great in the best of one meta when we're facing off against aggro decks. It will allow us to throw our hand, like I said, at our opponent's face, gain life for it, so we can take their creature damage and, uh, you know, just race them, right? And better than that, at the beginning of your upkeep, exile an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard. You may cast it this turn. Uh, spell cast this way would be put into your graveyard instead, uh, and then exile it, right? So this is just uh, a really, really nice uh, replayability of our cards through the grave, basically giving everything flashback without saying it, uh, right? So loving that. Now that we have kind of an idea of what's going on with the uh, base of the deck, let's talk about some of these burn spells. Play with fire, two damage to any target. If it was a player, scry one. Stri strictly better than shock for that scry if it goes to the face, but that doesn't, uh, you know, take away from shock. Still a great card. Available in best of one standard, dealing two damage to any target. And then three copies of, uh, sorry, four copies of Spike Field Hazard. One damage to any target. If a permanent would die this turn uh, from it, You'll exile it instead, which is nice, but we're just going face, right? We're using all of these spells to untap the Alchemist and retap it a whole bunch. Royal Eruption, three damage to any target. Kick it for seven, deal five damage instead. Original cost is only two. Sacred Fire, two damage to any target. You gain two life. Flashback for six, which is really nice. And the dual uh, color spell here is great on the Regent, like we talked about. Ingenious Inspiration. For three, sorcery speed, three damage to any target, and learn, which is great. We get into our sideboard from that as well. We have start from scratch, one deal to uh, one damage, one deal to any target, deal one damage to any target, uh, which is nice. Or destroy artifact, 
We also have the Inkling Summonings, which can untap the Alchemist and give you a Flyer, which is pretty good. Um, and Mascot Exhibition if you get into too many lands. And if there's a threat, you can exile it with Reduced to Memory. Um, you know, stop anything that uh, you know is going to come at you uh, attack-wise. You know, if there's a big creature that you can't stop, just, you know, probation it. Stop it down for the turn and just get that extra burn out, right? Um, so that's the sideboard, you know, not too important within the deck, but it still plays a role that is also the entire deck list, right? So you're using the Alchemist to do the bulk amount of your damage. You're increasing your instances and sorceries through the Slayer, which is really nice. And then you're drawing uh, basically unlimited cards off the top of your library through the Regent and then also casting cards from your graveyard with the scroll wielder which is pretty cool so with that out of the way we're going to demonstrate this all in the um gameplay footage now so don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel and even become a patreon if you're finding value within today's series of course uh you know we do have plenty of brand new decks for you guys to check out as well so go to my recent uploads uh on the hello good game youtube page and just scroll through like those last five or six decks because we've got a lot of bangers it's not just this one and i don't want you to miss out so enjoy let's check out today's gameplay footage all right our opponent needed to log into our twitch stream it took them a good five minutes to start the match and then we got an immediate hello good game <laughs> hey that's just what i think i don't know though welcome kian it's good to have you We should rope them like they roped us. You know what I mean? Let's pass our turn. We have got instant speed if we need. They're just doing shenanigans stuff. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard and then draw a card. This is a new instant, which is like fairly good. It's like a surveil um, based opt, I guess. Cobra in play and you know what we do with that. We eat it up. Take our turn. Land out. Sorcery speed smash down. And, uh... This artifact would be great. Maybe they pull an artifact. We don't want to get burned by that. But at this point, we don't really know. So maybe just the uh, the Inkling Summoning. And then we'll play this as a white source. It's pretty cool. The fact that it's a, you know, a sorcery that creates a creature is good for us. It gives us more field value. And it can trigger things like the Alchemist. Alright, playing defensively. This is in tapped right now. Which I think is fine. This is a, a good counter target. Oh, just a divide even. I don't mind just taking it back to my hand. That's not the worst. Let's end our turn. It's to the point we could get the scroll wielder in play. They're paying life for that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do they bounce with a Cyclone Summoner? They could also be going to Coma Town too, right? Ren and seven. 
Interesting. Plus one, reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all lands revealed this way into your hand, the rest in the grave. Zero, put any number of land cards from your hand into play. They go with that plus ability. They got uh, two lands. Summoner went into the grave. Hallelujah. <laughs> they have a memory deluge, though, which is going to help them. Okay. Not too shabby. Land in play. Should we try just to kill them? If they minus three, that's fine though. I think let's just go for it. Eleven. Oh man. <laughs> Down to nine. And we'll just hold up our play with fire, I think. And then we'll recast that, hopefully, with the scroll wielder from our grave. Devil turn is annoying. But it's not the end of the world. As long as they don't have another. So the Cyclone Summoner probably isn't what they're going to do because they have so many tokens. And the Planeswalker. They have the Lake to copy something. We have 23 life. We have 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 damage in hand. We, we have lethal. Uh, 10 damage, actually. Potentially even uh, 11, 12, 13, I think? The entire forest is in awe. I think uh, that's lethal for us then, right? Oh no, less than that because we're casting this now, so we lose the Alchemist damage. No blocks. Down to 13. Let's set up our Scry for next turn. Alchemist can go, even though it's good. And then... Let's let that do its thing. We get the hazard. Oh, that's great, though. So, activate ability. Let's just run away with it. It's all instant speed. We can do it on the stack. Got him. Oh. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Not even coma can stop the burn. <laughs> that was nice. And you get to see how much damage that thermal alchemist gets to put in. Free casting from our grave is great. Um, and Jen's just like a ton of burn, which is really cool. We actually went pretty far through our deck there, didn't we? Actually, no. 47 cards left. Didn't even start to. It's it's deceptively small visually if you if you scroll pretty quickly. It's just like, oh, there's like 12 cards there. You know what I mean? Maybe 15. <laughs> but it turns out there's a whole deck there. Maya says she likes the hand, but why aren't we going first, Dad? 
The cat always goes first. <laughs> Don't you know anything? So I would love to exile this ghast with that spike field hazard. Kind of sad we don't have it, but oh well. Maya, where's our spike field hazard? Let's snag this. This is going to be really bad. our turn. I hate gold span dragon so much. All we can do is throw our moon veil in front of it. Okay. A lot of treasures. Damage is fine. Let's just send this up top. Because they can probably just dispute it, interrupt the damage, and they're going to do that anyways. Hit for two in the air. One of the benefits to having a legendary with haste is that you know, you play it before Moon Veil, you get that value. You play it after Moon Veil, draw two cards on an empty hand, plus it attacks for the turn, right? Really, really nice stuff here. But there's that dragon that we did not want. And who wants it? You know, well, if you're playing with it, you want it. Um, yeah. Then they're cubing our Slayer. That uh, is really bad news, Bears. Kill the cube, take our Slayer back. Exile the dragon. We'll have increased damage again, so we only need to do three. We have that. I think we can kill it. Maybe. Oh, this is risky. Bisks! Hopefully they don't get another. Merchant's really good too, though. Oh, god. Good god, good god. Down to six. Deadly disputes. Just on the... Okay, on the ghast. Which is good. Draw two. Lots of treasures. Hopefully they're both lands. I don't think, though, or else there wouldn't be a holdup. Well, no, the ghasts, or not the ghasts, the merchant has another holdup if they want to continue on that sack journey. Yeah, Maya's just chilling. She's like, yeah, maybe if they don't like this match, they like the cat. Eh? Yeah. Another gas sack, raw treasure. Kill the dragon, they get another treasure, they sack it with their merchant. It's not great. I mean, killing that goldspan dragon for two mana is cool, but there's other ways to do that. Two damage. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Down to six and they have a faceless haven to smash us in the mouth with. This is sorcery speed, so it doesn't do much. So they're hitting for two. Not sure there's any way we win this. 
gold span and they win. Well, that gaining of life is good. That'll kill the Haven. And gain two life. Actually, won't do anything because they're going to sack the Haven for a draw. I mean, it gets rid of it, but they they get rid of it, I guess, not us. What are you doing, Willis? <laughs> oh, so we have to do it now. Or else the Haven kills us for four damage. It sucks we have to block. Hopefully they don't have removal. At least it's gone. We deal zero damage. Oh, nice. I wish. We can't kick this till seven. Close. It's good for drawing. They should have sacked the treasure to draw gold span first, but hey, what do I know? We top deck a land, we win. If we top deck a land, we win. <clears throat> Kicker for seven. We tap the alchemist, deal one, kick for five, untap the alchemist, and then do that last damage. Lock the merchant. Again, they should have looked for gold span before the attack phase. Land off the top, land off the top, land off the top. Oh! Tap the alchemist. Kick royal. Untap the alchemist. They need single target on the alchemist right now. No, we're good to go. Right? Top decking your seventh land isn't always bad. <laughs> Our opponent is playing first. Our hand looks nice. There's no alchemist here, but having that uh, regent just on turn four potentially is really nice. Hopefully we can just deal some damage here. Mono green is hard to beat. Let's remove the ramp. Maya's going for the rips. Turn two werewolf. They always do. I'm just a ranger's class. Just deal with it now. I don't want them to be able to protect it with open mana. The troll is too big for us to deal with. And then it's going to ranger's class and just smack us so hard.
Shoot. So they don't buff it up. Maybe we get another turn. They're just holding a protection for it, or what? Oh my lord and lantern. Have mercy. We're not going to get these creatures killed. Nine damage here minimum. They could even blizzard brawl our dragon. I don't think we make it out of this alive. Ouch. Moonvale's doing its thing. But we're still... just... dead, I think. On to 11. Let's see if they kill us this turn. Blizzard Brawl and the Alchemists, they win. Otherwise, we're down to one life. It's not Tuesdays. Give me that tail. Better run, mine's gonna get you. Cat's getting jealous. You're visiting her dad on the desk. We're being swarmed by a cat. Stay still. Don't make any sudden movements. Let them smell your fear. <laughs> mine's like, that's fine. I just want this laptop keyboard, baby. So that's some life gain for them. They pump in. We need to get so lucky. Ouch. Down to two. We have six. Oh! Uh, which leaves us five damage to do. You guys... No, this is seven. We're one land off, actually. I was excited there. So expensive. So we really need a good draw. Come on. Oh, no! This does extra damage, but still not enough. That doesn't do it. Good game. That was close. We almost got it. Really, really close. Down to one. Shucks. Can we go first, please? I'm trying to showcase a burn deck. <laughs> Come on, man. We play the pathways first uh, as we may pull snarls, and we're going to want those basics in hand later on for that, right? So play those pathways first. They may as well both be red. Yeah. Alchemist out. And if we can stack these alchemists. Holy Toledos. But they've got removal. So let's not get too excited yet. Cats are swarming around the computer and the power bar and the, it might turn everything off. Maya, easy. You'll kill everything. Please be careful. 
Like, okay, I'll move over here. Move your speaker, Dad. I'm coming up. I need an escape rope, she says. You can do it. Cats are like half snakes, eh? They can just, like, shift their body around. <laughs> uh, so this is a past turn. It's too much land. Until we beg for our seventh. You jerk! We just had to respond. <laughs> we just had to respond. All runs Epiphany, goes over. Attack, I dare you. Oh, they don't go for it. Let's deal two damage. Untap the Alchemist. Scry one. Tap the Alchemist. Deal one damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, we're not casting anything else. But we have the scry. Let's just go for it. I think they've got counter magic. We hold up play with fire. The scry should be nice. Mm, the hold the multiverse is fine. It's a good draw. We need to get these lands out of here. Uh, gaining life from the sciences is pretty annoying, but there's worse things. They lose two life there as well. But we have nothing. Oh! Not good. Are you kidding me? This is just game over. Right? There's no way we come back from this. There's another two life. Oh, shoot. <laughs> nice. So that's going to kill us, oh, I don't know, instantly. It's so close, right, you guys? Like, this is not that far away. We get really close, and they we know they gained four life. Good game. No! Down to four. Ah, oh, it's so close. We are so, 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 so close. Oh my god, we go first. Well, it's about time, Arena. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Pass our turn. 
Going straight to the alchemist, I feel. Let's get that in play. And now, whenever we cast, we're doing the, the jazz. Is that really a problem? I don't think so. We're chilling. We can block it. Mammoth is good, though. What? I guess it's got Vigilance. You may as well. Simba, please don't turn off the computer. Thank you. He always jumps right on top of my computer where the power button is. And it's the worst! Okay. I think we just go for it, don't we? Get that moon veil out. Alright. Do they have removal? Do they have life gain? They ramp, which is really good. So this mammoth is probably going to hit for 7. Yikes. The Root Grazer shouldn't be able to attack. They do have 5 mana up as well. It's not Snowland, so it's going to be a Kicked Inscription. A Ren and 7. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! <laughs> they can make a nice token here if they want with a minus. Or they can plus. No blocks. Take the 5, down to 17. Hey, Maya, you're being such a good girl. We should get a camera on you. And then they make that token. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Wow. I have survived your predecessors, and I shall survive you as well. <laughs> This has reach, which is frustrating to me. Uh, this is a no. We're declining still. Moonvale's not doing anything. Frickin' reach. And now we draw. Oh, if only we had the mana. And again, look how close we are. Down to five. Another land into play. Holy Toledo's. We can block with the Regent because it's doing nothing if these creatures get Vigilance. Like, if that Reach creature has Vigilance, then the Regent is useless. We may... Well, no, it's the Draw Engine still. Don't be a dingling, HGG. You need that to combo into a few different spells. <laughs> Just try to take the damage. I'm so unfiltered with my thought process. It all just comes right out. So you get, like, 
you know, the, the editorials of it as well as it continues. The innkeeper is good. That's their third land. Hmm. Oh, that triggers the landfall again. Ten, seventeen, twenty-one damage here. But the Reach can't attack. The Reach... Oh, no, it's got Vigilance. It can attack. <laughs> oh! So, we have only four damage if we keep the Alchemist, right? We tap for one now. We tap on our upkeep for two. We cast a spell for two to four, and then we tap again. Oh, no. Alchemist wins the game. As long as there's no trample... We fucked that up. Ah. That's so good. We should have blocked the Mammoth. I think they might have lethal here. They do. We would have been dead either block, though. Either way. Wow! We almost had lethal there. So close. Literally lethal on our upkeep. <laughs> lethal on our upkeep. Oh, man. Those are big attackers. And the blocks wouldn't have mattered. That token is sick. I've just been thinking, you know, what are we missing from this deck? And uh, it's the ability to always go first. <laughs> Right? We'll probably save these spells to play on top of the Slayer. Den of the Bugbear is good. I like it. So it's either goblins or like a burn aggro deck. <gasps> Maybe they're doing what we're doing. It for two skis. If they remove it, we have another. They'll have to spend their turn removing it, which is great. Of course, if a spell would deal damage uh, to an opponent, we get that much. Uh, plus one. Oh, they just exile us. But we can take that right back. We'll save it. All right, we can take that back later. So if they remove this other one, we can take the first one. Mm-hmm. I'm not running Brutal Cathar. This is pretty good. I mean, it gives itself haste and trample. Paladin class is cool, too. It increases our spells on their turn. Right, I mean, that's four damage. So much.
Uh, we have to do both these now, or else they're more expensive. Another 5 damage, though. And that's just lethal. We could kill the, the werewolf if we want, but eh, whatever, man. Just leave it. We have good damage in hand. Ugh. They have to deal with this creature, and um, we could still kill their Cathar if they do. That is not going to do it, though. Land, land, land. No one drops. So we're good to go. I said land, 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 but it was only one. I just do this to try to manifest lands into that. <laughs> they only pulled one. I mean, this is good. It's a 3-3. A three, three. Good for 5. Don't the care, bro. Land off the top. This hits for four. Um, I don't think it much matters. Good game. Then we hit for two here, and we have the additional uh, two damage down here. Just, you know, browsing my sideboard. Maybe we want more inspirations in the deck. Hmm. That's going to be a hard call. All right. So... The deck is performing, however, it could be better, right? So how do we solve this issue? I think that a lot of what we have is very, very good. I think that we probably have too many lands, right? Uh, yeah, it's nice to be consistent, but when we're sitting on 24 with the MDFCs, it's almost too consistent sometimes, especially when we're wanting to free cast off the top of our library with Moonvale Regent. So, uh, I do think that we should trim some lands, right? Uh, and then just incorporate more damage-based spells, right? Um, this will be in version 2, but uh, if you want to get there, it's just damage uh, any target. I think the command could be good for 5, um, right? I think the command is uh, really nice. And of course, we just go instances and sorceries if we're looking. Um, you know, I think... Light up the night uh, is an option. We don't have a planeswalker to uh, cast it again, uh, which is kind of a bummer. Um, and then, you know, Lorehold Command, I think, is a fairly good option for us as well. That's kind of what I've got uh, in the menu. Potentially, even Moon Ranger Slash uh, is really good damage. Um, so, cutting lands and adding some more damage spells to the deck. I've also been thinking about a Field Wipe that could uh, put out the Devils as well, right? So, maybe burn down the house. Uh, is really nice just to protect us against those aggro decks and then you know if we're not playing something that needs to be dealt with then we just make the aggro creatures which is pretty cool as well so you know that's another option for us um i'll put these in the sideboard for you oh no we can't because we're using the sideboard uh but i guess that's why we discuss it and those of you who stay until the end of the video get a little bit of extra insight as to where i'll be taking the deck in the future thank you all so much for watching i really do appreciate it make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and become a patreon if you enjoyed today's video uh take care have a great day and we'll see you soon in the next